Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dar, and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Microsoft Entra Deep Dive series. Um, I think this is roughly episode 12 now. Covered loads of ground within the Microsoft, admin, uh, Microsoft Entra Admin Center, specifically on Azure Active Directory at the moment, because that is a big chunk of uh, the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, to be fair. Um, but we've got about three, three or four more topics that we want to cover, or I'm going to cover before I move on to sort of permissions management and the Verify ID. But let's get stuck into today's episode and see what we've got in store. So as I mentioned, this is the uh, Microsoft Entra Deep Dive series. Um, so last episode, we capped off the identity governance uh, topic, which is a two-parter. And we focused on privilege man identity management, so Azure admin, uh, Azure AD um, roles, uh, and, and the Azure resource roles as well, so kind of looked at the difference of those. Now we discussed and looked at uh, lifecycle uh, workflows as well. So we are moving on to a new topic today, and it's going to be part one of the external identities topic. So again, I believe this is another two-parter. Um, so we'll look at the overview uh, within the, the Entra portal. We'll then look at all identities. And uh, finally, we will look at user flows. And again, throughout the whole piece, I'll do best practice and my own experience. Uh, so the first topic we're going to look at is the uh, external identities overview. So let's jump straight into the portal and take a look. Welcome back. Here we are in the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, and we're all the way down to uh, external identities. We've covered a lot of ground so far in the series. Now we'll click on Overview. Now, this, this doesn't really give you much. Um, it's a simple, straightforward, get started sort of page, which we've had with other sort of elements and other services within uh, Entra. If you remember, Identity Governance had the same sort of get started page. So there's not much to see here, apart from just an explanation that external identities is a set of capabilities. And it enables organizations to secure and manage an external user, including those sort of customers and partnerships beyond your organization boundaries. So a lot of services we've looked at, you know, including users, groups, applications, you know, identity governance, that's all there to help us protect our identity, our organization's uh, identity. But what, what external, ident external identities is doing allowed to protect those partnerships or those clients that we may be collaborating with. Um, so, you know, the, I've never come across a client that doesn't, partner or, or work with some sort of external um, company. So be a client or a, or, a, or a tech partner. So it's important, it's imperative we do protect that. And that's that's where external identities comes in. Um, so, you know, the, the sort of collaboration aspect with externally protecting the, not just their identity, but our identity, you know, when we make that partnership. So this Get Started page just goes through those steps. So, you know, set up how you want to collaborate, set up identity providers. So we're going to be going for all these topics um, in, in the next couple of episodes. So again, the, the overview is kind of where I want to start with, but the first kind of subtopic, if you remember, or second subtopic was really all identity providers. So here we've got sort of a SAML authentication at the bottom here with Web Services Federation Identity Providers. So this is more for, our, I suppose, um, more your SaaS sort of um, identity providers uh, here that you would add. But also here we've you know we've got already we've got some configured. These are sort of the default ones. So we've got Azure Active Directory, Microsoft account, email, one-time passcode. And here we can add straight away. We've got two sort of uh, ready-made identity providers we can add, which is Google or Facebook. Um, so th this this allows we, must, we need to configure a Google API. So you must have configured a Google API in within the Google tenancy first. Now I, I don't have one, so I'm just showing you what you need to do. So you need a client ID and a client secret. So that's all done. Um, in the Google API. So we we'll click on that link there. It tells us how to add that Google uh, as an identity provider. Um, so you go through all these steps. So I'll put, I'll put these links in the description so you know um, what to do there. And same with Facebook. You can create um, you need a client ID. Um, so you can configure the Facebook developer account here. So you can put the client ID and a client secret there. Same method. And with SAML, it's probably going to be a bit different. You've got a lot more information you need to put in. So a good display name, which you can put as anything. But here, do we want SAML or WS? So it depends which you know, federating identity provider, depends what we're, we're kind of federating with, or the domain name, how that's set up. Um, so it says here you can add more domains after configuring this as well. And then we're going to select this sort of method of populating metadata. So again, this this may change, depends if we put SAML, um, we've got the same information as we do with WS Fed as well. Um, so you can do pass metadata file or input metadata manual. And again, um, there's a link here to you know, configure the identity provider first. 
So again, I'll put all these links in the description so you know you can maybe try all this at home. Um, so again, once we've added those, they'll they'll end you know, they'll show here, and we can see all our sort of identity providers um, in in a, in a row here. So that's quickly let's take a look at uh, the sort of overview and the all identity providers. Let's jump back into the presentation and see what topics next. Welcome back to the presentation. So we're going to next take well the final topic in 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 this. Uh, part of the actual identities um, subtopic is going to be user flows. So I wanted to give a quick sort of overview as to, as to what sort of user flows is. So, so for applications you build, you can create sort of user flows that allow, allow users to sign in up for, up, sign up for an app uh, and create a sort of a new guest account. So this is more like a self-service sign-up. So, so all self-service sign-up user flows define the series of steps the user will follow during that sort of sign-up. Um, the identity providers you're going to allow them to use and the sort of user attributes you want them to collect. And you can associate one or more application with a single user flow. So let's jump back straight into the portal and see what we can configure. Welcome back. Here we are back in the Microsoft Entra uh, admin center and we're still in external identities. We'll go down here, we can see the user flow. So this is either what we're going to look at. Um, so again, you need to enable this. So just, just before you, you might find by default, you don't have this enabled. So to enable this, if you come to here and you have, an, you have like a warning saying you need to enable it, you go to users and user settings. You want to go down to the external users, uh, manage external collaboration settings, and down here, enable guest self-service sign up via user flow. So make sure this is set to yes. Um, and only then will you be able to configure um, the user flow. So let's go back to user flows. So we create a new user flow here. So as I mentioned, this defines the sort of uh, method uh, users need to follow to go to, to kind of create their own self-service account for applications. So this is a unique, so this first bit, unique string used to identify this user flow in request to Azure ID. This cannot be changed. So you need to make sure whatever user flow you choose here, um, demo underscore user underscore flow, let's for example. And then now this is the identity provider, which is going to be a zero AD or can they sign up with a Microsoft account and can they do email one time passcode. So we'll just leave it with a zero actually actually sign up a Microsoft account for now. So now what attributes do we want to capture? I mean, I think given name, surname, country, region are quite important because we want to make sure. I mean, here you can show more if you want as well. And I think, um, Email address is probably the so email address is on by default, so that's fine. Um, so we want to keep those, and that's then we can just create this. So now, when a user signs up to an app, uh, application um, and wants to create a self service account, they will have to follow this sort of user flow. So they can sign up with a Microsoft account or an Azure AD account, and they'll have to make sure they enter the like, email address, um, the first name, last name, etc. Um, so here, when we click on that, we can see more settings here. So we can go to identity providers, we can add or remove an identity provider if we want. Go to user attributes, we can configure, remove user attributes. API connectors, we can select if it's after federating with any provider, you join sign up, um, and before creating the user or anything in there, but we, we don't have any connectors. And again, you can look at page layouts for that sign up page as well, as well as languages as well. So you can add, if you've got you know, a company that's a global, you want to use different languages as well. Um, so that's the external user flows, and that's kind of what they allow you uh, to, to do. Um, so a bit of a quick, shorter episode there. Just wanted to kind of, I, I don't want to cram too much into each episode because I'm conscious that, you know, I found anyway in my experience, longer YouTube videos don't, don't tend to get watched. Um, so I'm trying to do small, small ones. So that's why I've split. Even though if you look at it, really, I've really got custom, got a few more topics, but we're going to configure. Uh, we're going to review some cross-tenant, uh, cross-tenant access settings, external collaboration settings, um, and I think we're going to review cross-tenant synchronization as well in the next uh, episode. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, all my, my, my links uh, to my socials are in the description. Um, and of course, I'll, I'll put a link to the, the last video as well. As well as those just the links to some of the, um, the, the sort of Microsoft Learn pages of the topics that we're covering. So thank you for watching. And until next time, goodbye.